CIS benchmarks are industry recognized guidelines, really, and they can be considered a form of compliance, but really they're much more along the lines of strongly recommended security settings and configurations for various software operating systems and devices that generally improve the overall security of those endpoints. And now what's really nice about CIS is that it's really straightforward, easy to understand, screenshots, steps of what to do, code that you can apply, and thus a framework like this can give you the specifics that you need to follow along something like the NIST cybersecurity framework to actually apply some of their recommended categories and subcategories. So let's jump in and see how it looks like. Inside of your lab data folder, you'll be able to find a document over here for Windows Server 2022 benchmarks. And these are really long documents. As you can see the file size over here, there are a lot of ways you can improve the general security of a Windows server. So let's open up this document, go through it. And like I said, they're really straightforward. It's just going to have a little table of contents right after this that you can follow along and select the areas that you want to improve. So I'll let you go and peruse through all of the possibilities you can have with this document. And what we're going to do is focus on account policies. So today we're going to enable a strong password policy as per the recommendations of the CIS benchmarks for Windows Server 2022. And so we'll go to page 24 and start away from there. So we can see the first one here is to ensure that enforced password history is set to 24 or more passwords. And there's a reason for this, and that's what's kind of nice about this document is it actually gives you a rationale and just suggests that if users continue to use the same password, the greater the chance an attacker can determine the password through brute force attacks. So there's almost like an encouragement that you want your users to change their passwords, of course, but you also want to store a number of them so that they don't try and go back to an old password three password changes later. And we can also get a sense of the impact of what this might look like. And what's really nice, like I said, is that it gives you step by step what to do. So we can see over here that there is a GP or group policy is what it's called to configure the setting. And so group policies really are just configurations in Windows environments that control the behavior and settings of user accounts and computer systems within a network. So if we are on a Windows server and we're going to change this group policy setting, it will then deploy and propagate across the network on all of the other Windows workstations that are in the domain, and then they'll have to follow the same rules. So we need to edit it inside of the group policy editor. We can type that inside of start, and it'll bring us to this little menu over here. And so in the left-hand pane, we can see our ability of what we can and cannot change for settings we have to go to the computer configuration side of things as per the CIS benchmark suggestion. And then it's underneath Windows settings and then security settings, account policies, password policy, and then finally enforce password history. Cool. So these, what you see here, these are policies. When you hear that being thrown around a lot, like the Windows policy needs to be updated, or we can enable a certain Windows policy to prevent some type of attack. This is where we need to go. If we were inside of a Windows server, we would need to go and edit these things, update them across the network. In this case, we want to enforce the password history, which is the first one. And it's as simple as just double clicking it. And let's just set it to 24 as the recommendation as per the CIS benchmark. We'll press OK. And that's it. That's as simple as it is. We've now applied a strongly recommended security configuration to one of our Windows Server policies. So welcome to the world of Windows Server System Administration. And this is what your IT administrator will do or other folks on your IT team and your security team. They'll collaborate together and they'll come up with ways of how we should tweak and tune and refine these different policies to meet security requirements and guidelines. And this is really what it is. You go in the back end and just make these updates and push it out to the network. Now, of course, you have to be careful in the real world. You want to make sure that you've given a lot of consideration because some of these things can break things inside of a real network and disable users from being able to access their accounts. For example, we saw a networking that we could connect over SMB shares. And what if we just disabled certain versions of support for devices that required it or just disable it outright? We'd have a lot of problems in the network. Things just wouldn't work. People wouldn't be able to access things, log in, share files, printers wouldn't work, you name it. A lot of problems would occur.
Cool. Okay. So let's go ahead and get a little bit more practice through that one more time. Let's look at the next recommendation over here. And this one is going to suggest to us that maximum password age is set to 365 or fewer days, but not zero. So makes sense. Longer password exists, the higher the likelihood it will be compromised by an attacker. So again, we can go and make this change inside a group policy. Let's go back inside of the group policy editor over here and make that adjustment. And look at that, it's actually less than 365 days. So sometimes the default policy will be good. In this case, we don't need to do anything. We've met the requirement and that's good news for us. So we can go and close that up and let's just do one more then because we didn't need to do anything for that one. So a little bit more practice. Let's take a look at the next one of minimum password age. I imagine would be the next one in line. And yeah, here it is. So here we need to set the minimum password age to one or more days. And this makes sense because if it's set to zero, you could just constantly change your password as many times as you want and get back to the one that you like. And that's kind of the rationale here is that at least if it's one day or more, they have to wait one day in between. And that's probably enough of a deterrent. So let's go and change that and update the minimum password age so we can meet the recommendations for the CIS benchmark. Great, so our password policy is getting stronger. This is awesome. So it's just as easy as following along as this and just making sure that everything makes sense with context with your organization. And again, that's why this benchmark is so valuable is it's a good starting point. It's very specific. It supports broad frameworks like NIST cybersecurity framework. And just remember at the end of the day that good security really is mostly just good system administration. So it starts here. Even if it's a little dull, maybe going through this one thing at a time, this is where it starts. And this is how you're going to get the best level of protection right out of the gates before you start going and buying all those fancy tools.